Welcome back, everybody, to Dungeon Brew. Diana and I are continuing our conversation in narrative design. Today, we're talking about plotting storyline arcs. Stay tuned. Welcome to Dungeon Brew. Welcome back, everybody, to Dungeon Brew. Diana and I are continuing talking about narrative design, which, of course, is the process of telling a really good story. Uh, specifically, we're going to be talking about doing this with NTTRPGs, and today we're talking about how to structure that storyline, how to plot out the arc of your story. So pretty excited to dive into this. Diana and I are both writers, so we love telling stories anyway. This is probably something that uh, we know a little bit too much about. <laughs> Diana, why don't you start us off by telling us what is a storyline arc? Yeah, uh, simply put, it's the plot. Um, the path that follows your story from beginning, the middle to end, and all the little pieces in between. Um, uh, we know this as the um, structure that comes with, you know, your start, your rise, your climax, and your fall. Um, but it's um, there are many different structures to, um, to look at here. But um, I guess we can just start with how do you choose your structure? How do you start? Yeah, I, I, there's a lot of different structures you can utilize. You're right. And I think that most people probably have a common people the layman thinks of story arcs as being like a three-act structure that's what we hear about all the time there's books that are written about this you see it in movies and video games sometimes they even like throw out that little pop piece We're like all right you're in act one now you're in act two to like lead people through it mm -hmm. um, but that that's very much of what it is it's just like this rise and fall of the story that's being told for me i always start with what do i want my story to be about and as a gm that story may change from my initial imagining uh, of whatever it is that I want my players to go through, but it's just an idea of like, here's the really cool story that I'd like to tell. Here's some of the things I'd like to have happen. I want to send them through the depths of hell and fight the devils on all nine levels, or I want to send them into the Westlands and overcome the kings that are ruling there and enforcing thraldom upon their people and have them release those slaves and free them, you know, back into the East. Having some sort of idea, of, this is the story that I want to have told. Yeah, yeah. So how, how deep, I guess, do you have to start with? Since it's with TTRPGs where you have so many people involved, mm -hmm. how much depth do you start with? Or do you create some of that story while you go um, I mean, I assume you do with things changing. Um, you can't really stick to something black and white when there's all these people, uh, you know, involved there. But how much do you start with knowing that you're going to change things along the way? Yeah, there's a lot of elements I think you have to develop at the get go, even before session zero to kind of build that introduction into the world and into the situation that you are presenting to your players. So you're going to have to create your NPCs and your cities and, you know, some initial things to like set up the world and get people involved and invested within it and some initial conflicts. And then it's going to be a, um, a their choice and what they choose to do and what the consequences come from that. So sometimes I end up building very short out, because when there's major decisions that need to be made, it's going to change the trajectory of what happens within the course of storytelling. And I think that's the unique thing about a TTRPG is that your story arc can change based on the decisions that players make. It can even change based on the roll of a die. They may go into a cavern and there will be an orc chieftain in there that is sending out his minions onto the town, raising havoc and stealing goods to bring in wealth to that orc chieftain. The players go in, they happen to roll a die with an amazing charisma check and convince him to have now this alliance with the mayor of the town and work together to increase this mercantile trade in the area. It's completely changed the dynamic of what I had happening in that story. It changes the arc and I got to go back to the drawing board. So when I think about starting, it's about you're starting with an outline, but it's very much an outline and it will change because you're going to have to keep going back to it to reflect what's happening with the dice rolls, what's happening with player decisions, and change that overall piece. Uh, but I guess I, for you, like you've written lots of stories and you dive into this place of trying to tell a really good story. Where do you start in terms of just putting together those scenes or imagining different scenes and getting them down on paper? Uh, well, I think I always start with, you know, having to come up with the um, details of the characters and their backgrounds first to see, you know, okay, well, what's the, 
um, what kind of issues can I come up with around this person's background mm-hmm. and their, um, you know, their the the laws or uh, rules of their world. Um, but I, I always start with the characters there, and I try to think of anything that um, is going to immediately um, not just get your, you know, um, adrenaline going, but mm-hmm. the emotions as well. Because I do tend to, I, I don't know, maybe because I'm a woman, I tend to throw in the <laughs> the emotional side of things there. But um, was I even answering your question there with where with where I start? I. I, there's more to the question, but I do think that what you're saying is super important because I, I do have almost like cards. It's almost like uh, of all the characters that exist within the world and what their backgrounds are and what their you know their motivations are, the things that get them invest get them themselves invested into the story that I'm telling, so that they have a purpose in there. And so I think that's a huge piece to it. Uh, but my question specifically was, how do you determine what scenes you want to have happen? So maybe you want to have a initial fight at a tavern, or you want to have an interaction between your main character and NPCs on the road. You want to have a big boss battle that occurs, you know, in the end of your first act, so to speak. Um, how do you decide what events you want to have happen throughout the course of your story? Well, for me, it has to be something that's going to be easy to build off of to to keep things going because I am a um, I'm more of a pantser than a plotter. Although I'm trying to plot more, I'm trying to get more mm-hmm. into the structures of things. Which th- this conversation is really honestly going. It, it helps me to you know break things down a little more here. But um, anything that I could build off of, anything that um, I can you know, add a couple little side quests if necessary. If mm-hmm. something, you know, I recognize there's some sort of plot hole suddenly, or if I realize I've come up with an idea that, wait a second, that doesn't necessarily make sense, or this is really boring. This is mm-hmm. not going in the direction that I want to go. Um, so I'll choose something that is easy to build off of and something that um, is going to be important for the, um, I guess, for the structure that I choose, you know, mm-hmm. is this going to be a hero's story? Is this going to be, um, you know, something that mm-hmm. is just sort of like a coming of age kind of thing? Um, but I, I'd say for me, that that's kind of where that starts. How about you? Uh, well, one of the things that you said that I really like is like having a little side quest or something that happens here to like bring adventure and action back into the story, which is very relevant to TTRPGs. I usually have a set of side quests that I've developed. Sometimes it's because my players have made a choice that's taken the game into a different direction. So now I have to build out into that realm to make the art go in that direction for what they've chosen. So I'm going to throw them into a side quest or a side dungeon or something that's previously built to keep the action going, to keep the arc of the story going, uh, that's going to keep them engaged while I'm building out that other piece. It's like, oh my god, they decided to go and kill the mayor, and they're going to completely align with the orc, and now they're going to whatever. That's great. The orc's going to send you on a mission to go get a special relic that's in a side dungeon that's going to keep you engaged in things that you're doing while I'm figuring out how all my NPCs and my story is happening in this realm before you come back to town again so that we can play out the rest of the main storyline, so to speak. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, uh, my personal preference is to think of those situations thinking of the the quest the adventures that my players are going to do and i think of them in terms of scenes or beats where they're almost like put them on an excel spreadsheet in little squares and i can move them around based on what my structure is to make sure that they're following this arc going up and back down again where you're building up action to a climax and then coming back down to a resolution which i i guess leads us into talking about what structure is probably best used in creating a TTRPG storyline. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you is what is the, I mean, is there one specifically that um, that comes to mind when you're doing uh, <clears throat> TTRPGs? I mean, there's so many different um, ones that are broken up in, you know, so many different steps. There's the five step, there's the seven step, there's, you know, I think there's just a three step. Um, mm-hmm. But when it comes to TTRPGs, like where, where do you even start with, choosing which structure i mean is there one that's going to be easiest to start moving around in the way that you say versus others the one i like the most and the one that i recommend to other gms is nigel watts eight point arc and the reason i choose that one is because i think the language in it is really direct and easy to understand so if you're not a writer so to speak and you don't want to pick from the other like 22 different plot arcs i made a video i think for tiktok not long ago talking about all the different 22 plot arcs that exist 
uh, or story arcs that you can pick from. But Nigel Watts' eight-point arc, I think the language is really concise, and it allows uh, GMs who aren't familiar with story writing to just really follow this nice, smooth um, process to building an engaging story for their characters. Um, we can talk about each one of those steps in there. I think it'd be helpful here. Uh, the first one mm -hmm. in that process is the stasis. It's like you're once upon a time. It's bringing the characters into the world. It's providing the ground level of information. You know, here's the world you're in. Here's the town. Here's the people. Here's the regularity of life. And, and this is what comfort looks like. This is what normality or normalcy looks like within this world. Mm -hmm. And so you're starting off by just like gently nudging your characters into this now it doesn't say you can't start with combat or conflict people are always like yeah start with action that's fine you know have them walking down the road and there's a caravan that's being attacked by kobolds you know your typical story and you got to save the farmer and his wife from these bandits or whatever the case may be you like have that action mm -hmm. but your initial step into the world is creating that once upon a time the stasis the normalcy of what the world looks like yeah, I think I've I've always, um, I mean, all through school and creative writing classes, they were always using Cinderella as mm -hmm. an example, um, because you start out just seeing her lifestyle and her having her, you know, terrible sisters and mm -hmm. her home life and why it's terrible, but how she's just accepted that this is her life and this is, you know, where things are going. Um, and that's, you know, before anything comes up that makes her even start thinking, wait a second, I could kind of step out of line a little bit secretly to go in, you know, um, uh, go see something new or go have a new experience. But it gives you that time to kind of get to know the character as well. Um, and, and like you said, the the rules and what and what that, you know, in normal life looks like before you start that adventure. So you have some sort of mental seed to start mm -hmm. growing as you go um, before and, that next step comes up, that trigger. Yeah, and what I like about your example is that the normalcy doesn't have to be perfect. It's just what's normal mm -hmm. for the character. And you're right, it allows the players in a TTRPG to get to understand their character, their own character's motivations, kind of play with them a little bit and figure out what their own mannerisms are and who they are as an individual within this world so that it gives them a chance to kind of step into their character, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But yeah, then the second step is the trigger. It's where you have something out of the ordinary happens. Now you have the, the king is sending, you know, uh, um, the sheriff into Nottingham, so to speak, to, to come and collect the taxes and to cause more harm to the people. Or you have the northern countries that are sending armies down that are causing war and they're burning down villages. Or you have orcs raiding in from the east that are, you know, whatever it is, there's now a trigger. Something has changed. That normalcy is disrupted. Mm-hmm. I like the Robin Hood idea there. I think that immediately, as soon as you said that, just laid out the whole story. I was like, oh, right, that's, that's, uh, I mean, considering, you know, we're writers too. I'm like applying everything, just kind of like, okay, where am I doing this? Where am I adding this? Um, but no, that, um, that trigger, I think, is um, what I, I make that mistake of always go an emotional, make it an emotional trigger. But mm -hmm. sometimes you can just make it something, um, something exciting, something adrenaline rushing, you know, that it immediately, um, you know, maybe could instill fear or something inside mm -hmm. of the reader or the player. Yeah, which is an emotion triggered response. I mean, that's exactly what you're aiming for. You're having some sort of visceral reaction to whatever is happening, which should motivate your characters into action. They should have an emotional yeah. response that triggers action. So that, and that's the third step then, it's the quest. Now something has happened, mm -hmm. we have to act. And so it leads them into the adventure. It's saying, all right, now normalcy is disrupted, something terrible is happening, we have to act. I think of Lord of the Rings, you know, they, they take the adventure, they take the ring, you know, to uh, Rivendell, and then it's like, we gotta destroy this thing. Okay, here's the quest. Here's our fellowship. We have to get together and take this ring and have it destroyed. This is the big thing that has to happen, and we're going to go on this quest to make sure that it is achieved. Yeah, and at the same time, not making it too much of a boom, because this is still considered the rising action, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That that um, I, I think that is another... A uh, thing to keep in mind is, you know, you want things to build up, you want things to seem exciting and to make sense and to keep moving things up, uh, but you don't want it to move too fast either. So 
when it comes to TTRPGs, do you find yourself having to add things in sometimes if characters start moving things too quickly? Do you ever feel you have to slow it down or do you let them take it, kind of take the reins? No, you're right. You sometimes have to like insert other scenes to kind of slow them down or slow their roll a little bit. Or they're so quick. We talked about this in a previous video. They're so quick to get to the adventure that they're just scrolling past what the NPCs are telling them and skipping mm -hmm. past all the details, um, which sometimes can have its own natural consequences. Well, you didn't want to hear about all the dangers that were on the road because you just sped through what all the king was telling you. You didn't properly prepare yourself by getting torches for when darkness fell. And so now you are lost in the wilderness with random encounters that now I'm, you know, utilizing to slow down the course of gameplay because you don't want to go running into the next level of the story at level two because you didn't go through the right processes to make sure you're strong enough before facing what I have prepared for you down the road. Mm -hmm. Well, that makes room then for that, um, that surprise to happen too. the, the mm -hmm. next step after you know, the quest beginning, then there's a surprise, something's not happening, something's not going mm -hmm. as it's expected. Um, and now there's a, you know, a whole slew of new problems or side quests that you have to do while you're working towards that, um, that main, main issue. Yeah. And I, I don't mean to stick with Lord of the Rings to this entire <laughs> video oh, as means, we're talking too. about this, but we see that happen, right? You know, they, they get lost in their travels. They get cut off from Sauron. They have to go through the mines of Moria. Uh, and they're suddenly, things aren't going like they planned. They're having to divert, go different directions. The stories become more complex. There's other obstacles that have to be, be overcome. And it's this is what you do in a TTRPG as well. And we're going to be talking about uh, linear and <laughs> complex um, storylines in our next video. But this is where you are able to add some complexity because you've added that surprise step that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I, I guess that critical that critical choice, I guess, if we're talking about or that next step, sorry, the mm -hmm. next step that would be critical choice, mm -hmm. um, you know, going with the Lord of the Rings um, concept here uh, would be them having to potentially split parties to yeah. go in the different directions there, um, which I think you try to avoid with TTRPGs. <laughs> yeah, do not split the party. If you get anything out of this video, do not split your party up. Uh, unless they choose it for themselves and make sure there are consequences that come up from that. But uh, no, you're right. Uh, when you're looking at critical choices in a TTRPG, it's it's more of like the fork in the road. Am I going to support that orc chieftain or am I going to support the mayor? Um, am I going to free the thralls or am I going to have my own stronghold and have thralls myself? It's oftentimes kind of split between this good and evil, but it can also be a, a moral choice You know, between two different... Um, good options in trying to weigh the balance of, of how they want to act. But it's got to be some sort of conflictual piece. And by the time you get to this critical choice step, you should, as a GM, have a good idea of who your players are, who they've made their characters out to be, what those motivations are, and you put decisions in the road that challenge those characters to grow. So the characters are also following an arc. We'll talk about character arcs another time specifically, but uh, yeah, you're making that fork in the road and you're making it a challenge. Yeah, it's got to be, it's got to be difficult. It's, if mm -hmm. it's not difficult, then, you know, your reader or your player is going to lose mm -hmm. interest. Um, but I mean, that good thing is you have all that beginning portion to build things up in such a way to make people to make the reader or the player understand why it's why it's difficult. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, you can always, you know, go back and throw stuff in there. Um, you know, if we look back at the uh, at the outline, as we were talking about the outline, that's I think the important thing to remember is that things can change as you go mm -hmm. and you're going to be able to go and fix things and add things when uh, when you need to. And, and once they've made that choice, then that's where you're going to lead to that next step of your arc and bring them into the climax. That's where you're now, there's going to be natural consequences for what they've chosen to do on one side or the other. You've chosen to align with the orc. Well, now the mayor has, you know, reached out to his allies in adjacent nations and they are formalizing a heroic party to come against you that you're going to have to battle and defeat. Or you've chosen to side with the mayor, but the orc has a... Uh, orc mage um, that, that is with them that is super powerful and is now pulling you know demonic beings from the netherworld up to rise against you and bring real havoc onto this uh, you know this city or whatever but but now you're going to have a climax rise up and this is usually where you have your big boss battles 
This is where you're bringing mm -hmm. them up to the point of fighting the big baddie, the BBEG in your TTRPG. There's a lot of acronyms to go look up. But uh, <laughs> that, that's, the, that's the next step is bringing them into that climatic piece of the story. Mm -hmm. And hoping that your players don't just wipe that out somehow. <laughs> and take that down. Take down all the excitement and all the, <laughs> the drive that you've built up so much with. Do you ever find yourself in that position with, with players? Like, can anything... Well, I guess that would be that would I, I think I'm answering my own question. That would be kind of on the uh, GM side to make sure that there's none of you know there, there's nothing that can just overpower that boss. You know, once you finally come to them. Yeah, so, I, I know John and I have talked about it before. Where you know there you of course have your challenge ratings that you put in there to make sure that it's going to fit the players. There's definitely a mechanic that's fit into that. Uh, I specifically build up alternative um, encounters or put in other extra bad guys to pull in if they start winning a little too easily or people to pull out. There's always a contingency plan to make sure that you're really reaching that climatic feel at this point within your story. Yeah. And I understand in, in storytelling how to take, you know, take it down into the, um, that falling action to, you know, start kind of toning things down. But how do you do that with TTRPGs when it's a boss battle, when it's something that's like, okay, the boss has been killed. Now, how do you go into that that next step, that reversal where there's there's change happening that kind of takes you into that falling action? Yeah. So if we continue with our idea of the mayor and the orc, which we've made up on the spot, so I apologize if this is all over the place, <laughs> but you, you have your mayor and your orc, and let's say you've defeated the orc, and the mayor has now regained his town, and he um, has full control of the mercantile trade again. He has money flowing in. And, you know, there's now this change in status. The money they didn't have before is now accessible to them. It's changed the, it's brought them out of poverty. It's putting them to a place of riches, richness. And so there's been this change in status that has happened within this village where they are now on the map, so to speak. And that may then turn other eyes towards them for other people that want to have access to those riches. So when I think about the story arc, especially in a TTRPG, and what we've just talked about, which is the last step of this, is, of course, is the resolution. You know, you live happily ever after. But that doesn't always happen when you're playing, you know, D&D, unless you're ending the campaign um, or any TTRPG. But at this point, you have the reversal, which then leads to this new stasis that then will lead to another trigger. Oh, now the mayor is rich and all eyes have turned on this village. And now you have this new enemy across the sea that wants to come over and have those riches for himself. And so when John and I have talked about this in previous videos, it's like tiers. You have your tier one, tier two, tier three, tier four of gameplay. We are going like level one to five, six to 10, 11 to 15, 16 to 20. And each one of those tiers has a story arc in it. So you're beating the BBEG at level five. It gives you a new stasis. You have a new enemy and you go right into another story arc going into level six. Is, which is also how you write a sequel. It's exactly how you write or a you sequel. Get, or, or a trilogy going. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things that, since we kind of gave you this Nigel Watts eight-point arc, it's something you can go and look up and see what we're talking about. I, again, I think this is a really easy way for uh, GMs to step into writing story arcs. It's a great outline to utilize. Um, I am personally a fan of three-point arc structures, four-point arc structures. Uh, you and I both use the seven-point, but this one I think works well for if you're creating a TTRPG. But one of the things that, that you're challenged with, I think, in a GM is just like you mentioned earlier, it's moving scenes around to make sure you're fitting that arc. So having those in oh, almost done my coffee, ha having those uh, lined out, I just need to stop talking with my hands, having those lined out uh, to be able to move them around to make sure you're fitting that arc structure is helpful. Uh, putting them, like I said, I like an Excel spreadsheet because I can just drag the boxes and move them around like whatever that game is with the little nine squares to make sure you can get all nine in order. But mm -hmm. you, you move the squares around to make sure you're fitting that rise and fall. And it, it's really helpful, especially in a game where the story is changing because it's based so much on what those players are doing and the die that they're rolling. Yeah, this is... This is making me look at, at writing in a whole different way as a pantser, as a person who doesn't necessarily <laughs> plot everything. I just kind of dive in and see where it goes. But um, I can see where, you know, being able to move these scenes around is something that is, you know, it's, 
a significant help in writing um, as well as in game gaming. And I, I can imagine how this would even go into uh, just basic narrative design and things mm -hmm. uh, when it goes into creating games and the stories and the world of the games as well. Yeah. Uh, the other piece that I want to make sure I add in before we end, I know we're getting kind of long here, is another benefit of having those scenes written out and looking at your story in this context is you can make sure you're not missing out on anything because all eight of these steps that we're talking about are super important to keeping players engaged and telling good stories. And if you line these out and you find that you don't have a trigger or you don't have a surprise element or a critical choice for your players to make, you are, you're robbing them of something great. I, I, that's probably the best yeah. way I can say it. And it's probably boring. <laughs> <laughs> and it's probably boring, and they're off playing another game on the side <laughs> or uh -huh. texting on their phone or doing something because they're not immersed within the story. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else that you want to add on this before you encourage everyone to hit stuff and like stuff? No, I was gonna. I was just gonna dive in and, and make that the real climax. Everybody, go ahead. No, um, the uh, <laughs> if if you're enjoying our content, everybody here, please um, remember to click the like and subscribe. Uh, ring that little bell there to be notified whenever we have a new video up. All right, we'll talk to you guys all next time when we talk about linear and complex storytelling. Welcome to Dungeon Room.